This week, Disney launched a robot with personality. Adobe launched two big AI products. OpenAI will reduce its price. Eleven Labs introduces AI voice dubbing. And Meta's AI sticker generator is being used for all types of horrible things. Here's all the biggest AI and tech stories for the week. Let's go. First, Disney launched a robot of their own. But this robot is very different from Tesla's Optimus robot and Boston Dynamics multiple robots because this one has personality. Of course, in a very Disney way, they made this robot full of joy and cuteness. The robot kind of looks like Wally, -E, and as it walks, it packs an enormous amount of expression. This robot was created by the Disney research team out of Zurich. According to the IEEE article, it's mostly 3D printed using modular hardware and actuators that made it quick to design and iterate on. According to Morgan Pope, a research scientist on the Disney team, at Disney, our robots have to strut, prance, sneak, trot or meander to convey the emotion that we need them to. And apparently this robot wasn't just built by engineers and scientists. They also brought in designers and animators to make sure that the robot really had a strong sense of personality in a very Disney way. Disney used a reinforcement learning based pipeline to make sure that the robot combines a balance of the animator's vision with robust robotic movement. And just look, it's super cute. I can imagine these walking around Disneyland or Disney World, bringing joy to all the kids you see it, and probably adults, including myself. I also wonder if this will be the toy of the year in a few years down the line, if they're able to shrink the size and get the cost down. It seems like each week we're talking about a new robot launch, so we're accelerating towards the future where every household has a robot. Our next story is about Adobe. This week, they gave a huge upgrade to their Firefly product, which is their generative AI product. The latest version of Firefly was trained on 70% more image data, enabling a much higher quality of visual generations. They they also gave Firefly new controls to better fine tune the image generation, such as uploading a photo to mimic its style. These are features that Leonardo.ai and Midjourney already have, but it's good to see more competition, even if it's from Adobe. Also, Adobe Illustrator can now generate vector graphics from text prompts, as well as Adobe Express gaining AI capabilities for quick social media creations. I'm not the biggest fan of Adobe products, but these definitely seem like cool additional features to a product that we know generates 100% copyright approved content. Adobe also announced Project Stardust. This all new AI powered photo editing tool makes it much easier to alter images without prior editing experience. I can imagine this is their way of allowing people without Photoshop skills to still edit photos effectively. I can't use Photoshop to save my life, so anything to make it easier is very welcome. A little while ago, they spent over $20 billion acquiring a company called Figma, which is a more simple version and web-based version of the Photoshop product. So it's interesting to see how these two product suites evolve. I haven't heard much about Figma since the acquisition, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them adding all of the same AI capabilities into that product as well. According to The Verge's article, a quick demonstration of the new software shows how objects in a photograph, such as the yellow suitcase and its shadow in the example image, are automatically identified and selected as if they had been separated using Photoshop's lasso tool. The clip then demonstrates demonstrates how objects can be moved, deleted, or otherwise manipulated as if they were stored in separate layers, with the missing space behind them being automatically filled in to match the rest of their surroundings. It's truly impressive. The full suite of features will be announced at Adobe Max, and apparently these are just a small fraction of the total capabilities that Stardust has. Our next story is about Eleven Labs, which creates voice AI products. This week, they launched their AI dubbing product, which allows creators to upload their voice and dub it seamlessly into 29 different languages in seconds. What is most impressive about this is they maintain the speaker's voice even though it's not them speaking. I gave another example of this a couple weeks ago where a Lex Friedman clip was dubbed into another language and it's his voice speaking and it really is impressive. And not only that, but they're able to detect different speakers in the same video and dub their voice correctly depending on who's speaking. It's super easy to use and incredibly fast. This seems like a no brainer for any creator. Mr. Beast, the biggest YouTuber in the world, has spoken about the benefits of dubbing his videos into other languages to increase his reach and growth. However, he's always using human voice actors to do the dubbing and the voice 
does not sound like him. But now he'll be able to use this product. He'll likely save money and it'll feel more authentic because it'll actually be his voice across all of the different languages he supports. This is just another example of a job that is going to go away because of AI. Check out this example of Eleven Labs AI dubbing in action. Behold, this magnificent blue jewel suspended in the vastness of the cosmos. Siehe, dieser prächtige blaue Juwel, der in der Weite des Kosmos schwebt. Ein Planet von erstaunlicher Schönheit und Komplexität. Next, it seems Jeff Bezos is going head on with Elon Musk. This week, Amazon launched its first internet satellite prototypes, directly competing with SpaceX with their product called Starlink. There are already thousands of Starlink satellites in the sky, so Amazon has a lot of catching up to do. Amazon plans to build a network of 3,236 satellites in low Earth orbit to provide high speed internet access anywhere in the world. The great thing about these satellite internet providers is that they can be used anywhere in the world and they tend to get really high speeds. So even in the most remote places where traditional cable or fiber optic internet can't reach, you can still have great internet access. Not only that, but Starlink and now Amazon's product will allow people on the move to have great internet, including from RVs, boats, cars, and planes. Jeff Bezos also has a rocket company called Blue Origin. And of course, Amazon has a contract with them. This initial launch for Amazon is just a prototype and Amazon Amazon reiterated that its first production satellites are on track to launch in the first half of next year, with plans to begin beta testing with the actual internet network with customers by the end of 2024. I'm excited to see all this competition for satellite-based internet providers. Do you use Starlink? If so, let me know in the comments how it is, because I'm thinking about getting it. Our next story is about OpenAI, who plans to introduce major updates for developers next month to make it cheaper and faster to build AI software applications, which will be much appreciated appreciated by many developers, including myself. Recently, I've been playing around with Autogen, as you know, and I've made two videos, which I'll link to in the description about how to use it. Autogen allows developers to create AI agent teams easily, and right now it's best used with GPT-4. However, it gets incredibly expensive very quickly. And not only that, I've been running into rate limit issues all the time. I'm putting together a video on using an open source model with Autogen, but I'd also like the option of using GPT-4 without completely completely blowing my budget. With just a few iterations through Autogen, the cost can reach $10 easily. So imagine building a product to production scale. Most use cases would just be financially impossible to justify. So as OpenAI faces increased competition from Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, they'll need to continue to bring down the price of their API to attract developers and build a true ecosystem, which will be required for them to beat the competition. According to the Reuters article, the company also plans to unveil new tools tools, such as vision capabilities that will enable developers to build applications with the ability to analyze images and describe them. ChatGPT Vision is already rolling out to consumers who use ChatGPT Plus and will be available to developers very soon as well. These new features are expected to be rolled out at OpenAI's developer conference in San Francisco early next month. Also in the world of OpenAI news, the company behind ChatGPT is exploring making its own AI chips. Earlier this year, they had a huge investment by Microsoft, which included credits in Microsoft's Azure server product. But apparently, that's not enough. OpenAI is currently evaluating a potential acquisition target, which would allow them to build their own custom silicon. Very similar to how Apple started producing their own silicon, this has the potential to allow OpenAI to build much more efficient and powerful chips that are custom tailored to their use cases. This will allow OpenAI to continue to reduce their prices, which, as I just mentioned, has been a problem for many developers building on top of ChatGPT. According to the Reuters article, CEO Sam Altman has made the acquisition of more AI chips a top priority for the company. He has publicly complained about the scarcity of graphics processing units, a market dominated by NVIDIA, which controls more than 80% of the global market for chips, best suited to run AI applications, and of course, gaming. Many companies are struggling to acquire the GPU processing power necessary to train their own models. The biggest tech companies in the world, including Apple, Amazon, Meta, and others are already creating and have created their own custom chips. Still, 
OpenAI is likely going to be very reliant on Microsoft Azure and their chips for a while, since creating a custom chip from scratch takes years. It's also known that Microsoft is developing custom AI chips themselves and that OpenAI is already testing them. Microsoft seems to be hedging against their investment in OpenAI given their partnership with Meta and other AI companies. And so it looks like now OpenAI is trying to do the same thing and is hedging its reliance on Microsoft. Speaking of GPUs, NVIDIA is reporting reportedly making additional versions of their RTX line of graphics cards with an RTX 4080 Super or RTX 4080 Ti, which are enhanced versions of the RTX 4080. These new cards with a rumored release date of early 2024 will come in at around the same price range as the current RTX 4080, but will be much more performant. This will also likely cause the RTX 4080 to have a big price drop, which is great because otherwise no one would buy it over these new chips. And and this gives more options to consumers to choose the chip that makes the most sense for their use case and budget. And it seems that companies building their own AI chips is the main AI news story this week. Samsung also joined the party, unveiling its next generation mobile processors with the latest graphics and generative AI technology built in. The Korean tech giant said that the new mobile chip features a data processing speed of 1.7 times faster and an AI performance that is 14.7 times faster than those of its predecessors. Assessor. Samsung is definitely competing head on with Apple, whose M1 and M2 chips are incredibly good at AI use cases. Some believe that the tech giant will likely equip these chips in its newest flagship Galaxy S24 smartphone models, which are set to be released at the first half of next year. Next, it seems Meta is not slowing down when it comes to open source AI. This week, they launched Stable Signature, which is a tool that helps watermark generative AI images. As as I've mentioned a bunch of times before, I'm a huge fan of labeling AI-generated images as AI. Deep fakes and other fake AI images are one of the biggest risks to the internet right now. If you're watching this video, you're one of the 10,000 lucky people who'll get an iPhone 15 Pro for just $2. It's so easy to create fake images and video using AI tools that literally anybody can do it. And of course, there's gonna be a bunch of bad actors using fake images and video to try to manipulate the news. So I'm glad to see Meta release this product, which allows people to add watermarking to generative AI images, but in a completely invisible way. According to the blog post announcement, Stable Signature closes the potential for removing the watermark by rooting it in the model with a watermark that can trace back to where the image was created. They provide an example where Alice trains a master generative model, but before distributing it, she fine tunes a small part of that model called the decoder to root a given watermark for Bob. And then when that model is used, all of the images generated will have this watermark, which helps identify the model version, the company, a user, etc. They also mentioned that no matter how a person transforms an image, the original watermark will likely remain intact in the digital data and can be traced back to the generative model where it was created. They also mentioned that during the research of stable signature, there were two main benefits. First, they were able to control and reduce the generation of false positives, which occurred when they mistake an image produced by humans for one that was generated by AI. And then second, their watermarking method allows them to trace images from various versions of the same model. And last, they mentioned that as of today, they are focused on watermarking images, but they also plan on extending this technology to other modalities, which means video, audio, and others. Cheers to Meta for keeping up the great open source work. But Meta had some bad news this week too. Their AI stickers product was completely exploited to generate horrible images. Whether it was SpongeBob with a rifle, Elon Musk as a woman, and even tons of images of Hitler, OpenAI seems to have figured out this problem with Dolly. Their solution is essentially having a user write write the prompt to ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT writes the prompt for the generative art model, Dolly. The benefit of using this two-step process is that the first model can filter out any prompts that include words or terms that go against the terms of service. For example, I can't even get Dolly to create images using some of my favorite characters from popular TV shows because they're copywritten. It seems Meta is going to have to take this approach as well. The model behind these stickers is called Emu, and apparently 
Wikipedia tries to block some of these keywords, but it doesn't do a very good job of it. According to the Gizmodo article, in Gizmodo's own test, the phrase Elon Musk large breast was blocked while Elon Musk memories got past emu, and they were also able to generate images with phrases like SpongeBob rifle and Karl Marx underwear. I hope they're able to figure out how to stop this because Meta's messaging products, including Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, are used by so many children. Our next story is about generative text to video. A new research project out of the National University of Singapore is called Show One, which apparently outperforms current alternatives and in some cases pretty significantly outperforms them. Right now, Gen 2 is the clear leader in text to video. In fact, they don't seem to have any competition at all. So I'm definitely excited to see this new project. According to the team that made Show One, it achieves the same or better results in terms of realism and text to video alignment than in other state of the art models such as Imagine Video and Runways Gen 2, but using only 20 to 25% of the GPU memory required. So not only is it better, but it's also more efficient. They've already released a research paper and examples on their GitHub page, and apparently soon we're gonna have the code as well. I'm always happy to see new awesome AI projects released in the open source community. Check out this example video created with show one. If you want me to create a tutorial for how to use Show One, let me know in the comments below. And next, not a week goes by where we aren't talking about AI and copyright. This week, CNN published an article with the title, These Books Are Being Used to Train AI, No One Told the Authors. Apparently, a data set being used to train many models right now is based on a collection of pirated ebooks spanning all genres. Books help to train generative AI models because they show these models how to predict the next words in a sentence. A system called Books three was apparently used to train many models, including Meta's, and they're being included in lawsuits against Meta and other companies because the data set is using books without authorization. According to the CNN article, now thanks to a database published by The Atlantic last week pulling from Books 3, authors can see whether their book specifically is being used to train these AI systems. And many are not happy. Many authors are extremely upset to find that their books are being used without authorization to train AI. And if if it goes far enough in the courts, a judge might force Meta and other companies, including ChatGPT, to wipe their models and start again from scratch using completely compliant data sets. This would be a huge setback for AI, but I totally understand how frustrating it is to have your creation stolen. And completely authorized and permissible data sets will continue to increase in value as AI generates so much value in the real world and data sets get more and more locked down. I created a video a few weeks ago talking about how Reddit is shutting down its API was just the first step in what is likely to be a complete transformation of the internet as we know it today. Companies with unique and valuable data sets will continue to lock down those data sets where they previously provided APIs for developers to build additional tooling on top of those data sets and platform. This has the likely consequence of slowing down innovation and causing the biggest tech players to have an unfair advantage. And this week, there's no AI video of the week, but as usual, if you do want to submit a video for AI video of the week, jump in my Discord, the link is in the description below. And our last story is about a company named Wave, a British startup specializing in AI for autonomous driving. This company unveiled a new model called Gaia One, which is a generative model for autonomous car training data. As mentioned a few weeks ago, Tesla has completely transitioned to using neural networks exclusively for their autonomous driving product. This is a change from their previous method of using both neural networks and hard-coded examples, which they say will not get them to the highest level of autonomous driving. Driving. This is also different from Waymo and other robotaxi companies who spend a lot of time mapping out specific cities. These robotaxis do incredibly well in these specific cities, but as soon as they go outside of them, they fail. Tesla, on the other hand, uses video from millions of miles of driving of those Teslas to train their models so that their autonomous driving AI can even navigate the most complex roads that it had no previous knowledge of. In my opinion, this is the right way to do autonomous driving. Other automakers can can't catch up with Tesla because most of their cars don't include cameras like every Tesla does by default. This allows Tesla to capture video and use it to train their models. However, with Wave's new AI model, it's able to generate synthetic video of situations that can train autonomous driving models without actually having real world video. This is a very interesting concept, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna perform. It's kind of like a large language model generating data for another large language model. At a certain point, you're just getting derivative data 
data and no new knowledge is being generated. But if this is able to work well, auto companies would essentially be able to create an infinite amount of driving data to train their models, vastly accelerating reaching fully autonomous driving. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.